Ginger Chicory Ham, welcome to our channel. And if you are new here and checking out our channel for the first time, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. So in today's video, I am doing five little stools. So um, part of reselling is going to thrift stores, looking for items that you know that you can repurpose, upcycle, and make over. So one of the things I run across are stool, little foot stools. And I definitely always have a vision for them. Not only can you use them as stools, as you can use them as like children be able to reach the sink, a little extra height if you're a little bit on the short side in your kitchen, or you know, just as a riser, as a decorative piece, something to put a plant on. There's just so many uses for uses for these little stools. So they're definitely something that I've made over in the past and I'm all out of them. And I thought, oh goodness, our our open house is getting ready. Like I said, we're getting ready for an open house the 1st of November at our antique mall. So yes, these cute little stools are ready to get made over. Now, they're not something that I find all the time. So I really kind of wait till I get a grouping of items that are similar. But they usually run about the 409 609 price tag it all depends on who's pricing the items that day and i know i got some reviews to leave this little stool alone but it is a little to me it's a little bit worse for wear and i know this tractor is super cute but i'm gonna make it more of a decorative piece for the people who shop in my booth but you can definitely tell that somebody has gnawed on it some little critter was um getting his teeth right into that wood this was an interesting piece uh, it was birch like but it almost made it look plastic so for four dollars i'm not going to feel bad making this one over now this little cutie was given to me in that grouping of wonderful gifts that i got from a viewer kelly so i'm super excited to make this little orange stool over now, first off, I have to deal with this little tractor. As super cute as it is, I want to fit it more into the ginger chick decor. So I'm going to remove that price tag and we're going to sand it off a little bit to see if I can get some of the paint job sanded off. I would not be able to sand this smooth. It's pretty deep in there. And I also want to see if I can smooth out some of these bite marks on the bottom of these legs. So I'm going to be using some Bondo to fill all these, that engraving right in. I used it on a top of a dresser. And since this is top of a stool that I'm not really sure what somebody would be using it for, I want to make sure that it's good and on there. And I probably got a little too much, but I wasn't really sure how much it was going to take to cover up this little stool. You know, it's always kind of a guesstimate. So you take some of the base of the Bondo, a little bit of the hardener. Now I've had the same container for probably over a couple of years now so a little bit goes a long way even though yeah I realized after I got it all done I'm like oh well that might have been a little too much but all you do is then you put that hardener which is the red stuff in it, and when the two are mixed together it starts to activate and I will tell you that this is very smelly stuff so I have the garage doors open in our workshop I have a mask on I have gloves on but I definitely love how this sets up and sands so you can tell when it starts to set up but i try to get it as smooth as i can using a spackling tool just it saves your sanding time if you can get it as smooth as you possibly can and then i'll go ahead and set it off to the side and let that set up for about 20 30 minutes and it should be sandable so I might as well go ahead and start sanding on some of these little stools now. I'm not sure if this is the way this was bought or this was the, in the process of trying to get most of the paint off. But since I'm going to be painting over it, I'm just going to try to make it as smooth as I possibly can, especially on that top, just using some 220 sandpaper. I'm not worried about this little stool getting all that paint off of it. When I showed this in the haul video, I thought that the legs were pretty secure, but maybe sanding them, I loosened them up. So all I'm going in is with some of the CA Star Bond glue. I'm putting a little bit. It doesn't need to be popped out. It's not that loose. There's just a little bit of movement, and I want to make sure that they're not moving it. So a little bit of CA glue around the base kind of 
smush that leg back and forth a little bit, making sure that I get that all the little joints and the glue in there, and then spray a little bit of the activator on there to 15 seconds, it'll be good and dry. So I'm just, as you see, putting the glue on, smushing it a little bit back and forth, making sure that the joint is covered, and then a little CA glue accelerator to dry it for 15 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the joints. Then what I couldn't get to with the orbital sander, I'm gonna go in with some 220 and just hand sand. All I'm doing is just making sure that I feel smoothness. So now in the time that it took me to sand that one, this one is cured up enough. I know that the longer you let Bondo sit, the harder it is to sand. So as you see in about 20-30 minutes, it's good enough to sand. And so I'm just taking that orbital sander, the same 220 sandpaper, and then just trying to get it as smooth as I possibly can. So for this little red stool, it is very rough and very, yeah, it's just rough to the touch. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that. I don't mind most of those nail holes. I like the character that it gives and it just has some random nails anyway in it. But I'm just going to go ahead and get it a, a little bit smoother. And then where I can't get with the orbital sander, I'll go in with my Black & Decker mouse sander. Now that I've got them all sanded smooth and nope, I was not worried about taking all the paint off. You don't always have to worry about that. So nope, now I'm just going in and on that little red stool, there was some crackage that I like the nails, but I wanted to make it look a little bit more like it wasn't going to be falling apart. So I did do a little bit of spackling. I do love how that Bondo turned out and this little, that little birch stool didn't really need anything. I'm going to go ahead and get them all cleaned up some hot water and some super clean in a bucket. So nope, just getting them all wiped down. Now I have to be a little bit on the careful side because not so much the Bondo, but the other spackling that I used, it will turn pink again. And I'll just have to make sure that everything is dry before I paint on them anyway. So I'd like to make my top as pretty as possible. And just because I bondoed it, it is not quite ready for paint. So I could prime it or for me, I'm going to go ahead and use some shellac spray because it's a little bit on the quicker side, especially for this kind of a flip. So I'm just going to be giving it two coats wherever I put the bondo and especially on that little red stool, wherever I put that spackling. That'll just even out the prosty and make it so when I paint these items that it has a nice smooth well, especially on this little one, a semi-smooth, more of an even finished at the end. I'd like to keep these five little stools just simple paint jobs. So I'm just going in with the black onyx right off the shelf, ready to use paint from Walmart. And I'm going to be using my True Coat Graco 360 sprayer to apply it. So when you're doing your sprayer, you want to do about a 10% ratio, they say, of paint versus water. And what I look for where I watched... The hint from Annie Sloan, the, the chalk paint queen, is that when spraying it, you want to make sure that when you're stirring it in with water, that the paint does not lay on top of the other paint, that it totally just blends in and becomes one. That way you know your ratio is right to go through a sprayer. So as long as I get that ratio right of how that paint is mixed up, we've never had to strain our paint to go into these sprayers and we clean out the sprayers after every use anyway. So yes, I just absolutely love how a paint sprayer will help devour these pieces and get them done quickly, especially when it comes to legs and spindly parts. Then after those have dried on the underneath side where I've gotten the most coverage, I'm going to go in with some Rust-Oleum in the clear mat as a top coat. I'm only painting these black today, guys, so I want to make sure that I get good coverage on this as their top coat. And after the clear coat is dry, I'm going to flip them over and take them back in the spray room and get that area, that surface area I didn't get with that first spray. And 
nice thing about using a flat spray is you sure can tell when it's dry because it's not shiny anymore. So now I'm going to go ahead and give it a, another top coat. The area that I just sprayed over and the overspray that hit the area that I already painted. But I'm getting these sealed back in with some Australian clear coat. So here, we're, here is where the fun begins, where I am still working over some of the stash that I have. These are leftover pieces of deck coupage paper, so I'm just measuring it. I thought, you know what, this has the wording fit, so why not? Why not use that whole piece of paper? I had just done a dresser flip where I only did two drawers, and this is one of the last little pieces that I left. Actually, I did a dresser, two drawers, and another little dresser on an entryway table, so I'm getting three projects out of this one $8 piece of decoupage paper. So now all I'm doing is I need something to glue it down, so I'm using some polycrylic to glue it down and then I will put polycrylic back over it but I just wanted to make sure that my wording was centered. Now for the next school, this is the one that Kelly gave me and look at this. This is the leftover. I had two um, coffee bean sack decoupage papers that this was the corner that was left over so I'm like oh my gosh all this little wording other than that top piece fits perfectly so I'm just getting a feel for the paper making sure that all the numbers fit it's okay if a little bit goes over it's supposed to just look like it's wore off with time. So I'm just cutting that little excess off because it didn't really make any sense to anybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and the way that I'll distress it in, I'm not worried about it. So I just want to make sure that I get the general of those numbers and those coffee beans on here. <music> Now for this little stool, I know that I filled that in so it was flat, but I wanted to share that technique with you all and I have the Bondo. So for this one, I'm using this adorable, oh my goodness, look at this cute little rooster. This is one that I got from Kelly in her generous haul that she had given to me. You'd think I would have put it on her stool, but it doesn't really match that stool as well as I envisioned. So it's just perfect for the top of this. So, but first to glue this down onto this stool, I need to take off that white edging. Then after taking off the white edit edging, I need to decide what extra I need to cut off. And there is definitely a good circle around this chicken. And so I'm able to cut off that bottom part. It's just like a perfect size for this. I just wanted to get that white part taken off so I could really visualize what the other major part of this image I could take off to make it fit this little stool. So when you're looking for decoupage paper on Etsy is where I find most of ours. They're not all equal. Some are a tissue paper, some are the regular, almost regular type of paper. And then like this one, it's more of a fabric like. So now I am learning because at first I was just ordering, ordering, ordering. And then I re now realize in the description to read a little bit better, but they all kind of go on the same way. So now let's flip over and do some grain sack striping. I will tell you and share with you that I've had good luck with decoupage papered items selling in our retail booth in this area. I, if you, in case you wanted to know how well, but grain sack stripings also sell really well for me. For so for right now, I am doing what sells the best for me, especially coming into the holiday season. If you're new to grain sack striping, you just put one piece of tape down, put another piece on either side of it, and then remove that center stripe, and that's where your first paint stripe will go. Now you, I just make sure that my tape is good to adhere. Even take my fingernail, especially along the edge where I'm going to be adding paint. You can do a base color. If 
you're afraid for it to bleed, but I don't mind the perfectly imperfect of the grain sack striping, and I have really good luck with that masking tape sealing in. And so I'm going to go with the Waverly Moss color today. This was kind of a tree barky before, that birch before, but then I painted it black and I tried to distress as much as I could, so I thought the moss was a perfect fit for the stripe. Now I'm choosing to do that dry pouncing technique only because I know that this moss was not going to really cover in just one and I wanted that color to pop through the black so that I'm going to dry it in between and go ahead and apply one more coat of the moss to make sure that that green is popping. When it comes to this green stripe, I do not plan on distressing it. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it with a clear coat just to seal it in. Because So in case when I put the tape over the stripe, I'm going to let that dry um, before doing go moving on to my next stripe. So that way it doesn't accidentally, sometimes when you put the tape over your stripe, it will pull some of the previous paint off when it's not sealed in. But I want these stripes to stay nice and crisp. Then when I'm applying my tape over that first stripe, I'm really only trying to adhere to the area that's the black, the space in between that is not going to be painted. I'm just doing one more little simple stripe. So I eyeball where you can see where I push that tape over just like a quarter of an inch. And then I went ahead and gave myself the same quarter of an inch space for the next little stripe to be painted. And now I'm just having that blow dryer help me release that so it doesn't pull off any of the paint. So now for this next project, I am doing red stripes. So what I did here was the same thing as I did with that first stripe that I painted. That, But I put my masking tape at the end of it and worked my way in so I could keep them centered. And then I'm now painting in the middle of that. And yes, I am using this red cranberry. I needed a project for a dresser or I needed a paint, let's say, that I thought matches, matched a dresser. <laughs> so I ordered this and also coming in to the Christmas season I thought yes I can do some pops of red so I wanted to I've been wanting to try this fusion paint anyway but I'll definitely do that th same thing when it comes to that black underneath that black is really going to show through and I want my red to show through so I will do a couple coats of drying in between to get the brightness of the red that I want for this little stool, I did not do that clear coat on top of it. As you can see, this is a little bit more, it's going to be a little bit more distressed. So I don't mind if some of that masking tape takes off some of that red. That's why I put that clear coat on the other one because I did not want it to be distressed. So the same thing, now I'm going in, I'm going to do another little stripe and I'm just eyeballing that quarter inch so I have a space that's unpainted in between that's why i just am obsessed with green sack striping you can just play and do whatever you want when it comes to these stripes And now that my Mod Podge is dry, all the glue that I put, glued these down with, I'm going to go in and distress these. So I just like to go in with, to even cut off the excess around, just going in with my Black & Decker Mouse Sander. I want this to look like it's aged, it's worn off in time. So I just go in with the tip very gingerly, trying to control how I'm sanding. You could probably just hand sand it too if you wanted to, and I don't mind if it's taking some of the paint. I can always go back in and paint more, but I just want to make it look like I just didn't glue a piece of paper down on a on my little stool. So I'm just going to go in there. It's going to show some of the white paper. That's okay. I'm just going to, yes, I'm just distressing it, making it sure that it's ripped off. And I guess, yes, I did do some mirrors where I had previously um, done that before I put it on the glass. Because, of course, I wasn't going to sand on glass. but So you could do it two different ways. You could do it before you adhere it to the little stool or before you adhere it to the item. Or you can do it while it's been glued down onto the item. For me, I knew I was going to be distressing at these little stools anyway.
Now I did that same thing on the top of this where I took it around, cut off that excess, kind of eyeballed, made sure that I was keeping a lot of the lettering on but when it comes to sanding on these legs i want to go in and hand sand it because i didn't necessarily get all that white or all that orange off of these legs because i knew that i was going to be painting over it i just wanted to make sure it's smooth so if i go in with that mouse sander i might be showing more than what i want to show so it's kind of a control issue where i'm going in and very gingerly hand sanding those areas So now this is my first one that has been that fabric type that I want to distress. So I'm not really sure how it will distress or it because it's not paper, it's more fabric. But I did notice that if I make a couple different passes over it, I can get it to start to distress. So just go in very gingerly if you want to distress this and just work your way down. Because, yes, I'm getting off that first layer of fabric and getting off the next layer of fabric and then finally getting it to where I can get it to distress and make it look like it was worn off. And, of course, if as long as I get that flat edge because it's a little bit thicker than paper, I'll be able to kind of fake it a little bit with the way that I'll paint it at the end. Since this one has flat it's flat the legs are flat i can go in with that black and decker sander and just distress the edges the way that i want to it is nice when you don't have to hand sand and you can control it with a sander but you definitely i'm still just using the, the little bit of the tip of this mouse, mouse sander if i laid the whole mouse sander right on the leg i would definitely be really over distressing not just distressing those edges and then I am going to go in and heavily distress this little stool as you. I tried to make it as smooth as it possibly could be. It was definitely very rough, but it definitely has that aged look to it. So even I just have 220 sandpaper on my sanders today here, and I just want to go in. I like all the little nail holes that are poking through. That's that little white spot that the camera's picking up. But I'm definitely just still going in gingerly. I don't want it to overly distress. I just wanted to make it look like it's that new worn kind of look. And then on this one, I'm not overly distressing those striping. I'm just using that sander just on the outer edge just to pop that wood, just to tie into the stressing that I did on the bottom. And then I will just take a 220 sandpaper that's been well used. It would be almost like using this steel wool over the rest of the pieces to open up that clear coat that I had sealed on them. Now that I'm done with sanding the pieces and I've cleaned up that sanding mess, whew, my goodness, you create a lot of sanding dust when it comes to sanding. So I'm just going in with the stencil, the JRV stencil brush, and I'm just gingerly kind of swiping from the sides up, just kind of giving it that brushed, like I've wore off, I've burned off, whatever have you, covering up that white of the paper when I distressed it, it showed through. I just want to make it look like it has worn off with time, but I don't want to go in crazily and cover it by any of those numbers. And the nice thing about that perfectly and perfect is even though we made this piece to look old or attempted to make it look old, you know, even older pieces, the labels don't perfectly come off all the same pieces and parts. So even though the one side's a little bit more than the other, it's that perfectly and perfect.
So my next step on these, yes it is, it is that Waverly Antiquing Wax. And if you can't get the Antiquing Wax, I do find that I do link the Amazon, in my Amazon store, the Folk Art, I think is very comparative if you can't get the Waverly guys. But I definitely love to give these a, just a little bit more aged. I love what the Antiquing Wax does to the brown. And it definitely ties that old look that I'm going in for for that decoupage paper on top of this. It just really ties this whole package together. And then on the rest of the piece, it just really bumps out, just accentuates what that distressing I had done where I had sanded so the edges would pop through that wood. So if you notice on that last piece, and especially on this piece, the full strength where I'm applying it is just on the wood and just on the black. And then I'm going to work onto that paper because there's black underneath that's really going to take away from the paper. Um, if you left it natural, the paper would pop a little bit more. Just I played with this enough that I just gingerly like to go in and work that in making it look like it was more of an age and on this one if i get too dark or anything i can always go back and if you get your antiquing wax too dark you can always go in with a natural wax and take the excess off but i just want to work my way in i love that look of those little burnt edges on there especially working that brown in with that black My final step when it comes to these little stools or any little risers and even though I waxed it yep I give it a few hours or overnight and let that wax dry and cure a little bit and then I always like to go back in with a top coat so I'm just using the polycrylic to seal these in especially in case somebody is going to be using them at, like as a plant sand or something that might be wet I just want to make sure that it's good and sealed in there. So what did you all think of the little footstools? Yep, I kept it easy. I kept it black. Black right now, we're in the fall season. Black has been selling for us. Um, and that decoupage paper. I'm trying to use what I have. Um, I, I am purchasing more, but um, <laughs> I'm definitely trying to use up what I have. So little pieces of parts, I just, you know, as we crafters, we can't throw them away. So I want to find a use for them and what more use than just adding some bling to a cute little footstool. So I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. And if 
you know, if I have inspired you in any way, please let me know down in the comments below along with a like. And if you are new and checking out our channel for the first time and want to become part of our YouTube family, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye. Thank you.